Hey everybody, it's Becky from Icing on Top Becky's Cakes and today I'm going to show you how to cook with isomalt and I'm going to show you how to cook it from its raw form so that you can make it for yourself at home. And we'll get it to this state here. You see it's got beautiful clarity and um, at this state you can pop it in the microwave at 30 second intervals and you can reheat it as many times as you want and make all different kinds of things pulling blowing casting like this like i've put it in a silicone dish and i've casted the shape that i wanted and these diamonds are great and you can see the clarity in the ice malt so it has directions on the back of this and it's a satin ice isomalt and um, the directions are super helpful. <laughs> and I always recommend using the directions of the ice malt that you have got because it could be different depending on what kind of brand you have. So this one um, was satin ice and they all follow the basic concept of you have to cook down the isomalt on about medium high heat in order to temper it. So you don't want to stir it. Ever. I don't stir it ever. I just slowly, slowly rotate it as it's cooking on medium high heat. As soon, uh, if you've already had your burner on me medium high heat, it only takes about five minutes for it to start melting. And at, at that point, I'm gonna make sure that I'm moving it occasionally, and then I set it back and let it melt a little more, and I move it occasionally. And that is just to keep that. Uh, movement going so that not one spot is getting too much heat because if it gets too much heat it can kind of yellow and you really don't you want to avoid that yellow you want even cooking and the more evenly it cooks the better your ice malt will be and so I just slowly move it try to get those those bigger chunks by kind of immersing it in some of that melted ice malt and moving it around and placing it back on the burner and once it's all thoroughly melted and you don't see those chunks, make sure that you're checking the temperature constantly because as soon as this one gets to 320, you want to take it off and plunge the bottom of your pan into cool water, immediately stopping the cooking. And that part is important for keeping it from yellowing. And you don't want yellow ice malt because uh, that's the whole beauty of ice malt is it can be so clear so i just immerse the bottom of that in cool water immediately and that just stops that cooking process and it's ready to pour into a mold or you can pour it onto a, a silicone mat if you're pulling it um, and always check out all my other videos if you want to check out the pulling process or even blowing ice malt there are so many fun ways to do it but i love using silicone for all all everything i'm pouring ice malt into because otherwise it sticks and you know then you can't use some of it so i always love putting it in silicone and i'm pouring it right into these molds you don't want to pour it though if your ice malt is still boiling and bubbling uh, you want to make sure all the bubbles have stopped before you pour it otherwise you're pouring even more bubbles into it and less bubbles you have to torch out later much better for you <laughs> so definitely wait until that those um bubbles are done because you're definitely wanting to bring your ice malt to a boil each time before you pour it into something but then wait until it stops bubbling and also I'm gonna set some aside here so you can see what it's like you can make your own tiles to pre-cook and so I just you know anything extra I will put here and then whenever I want to use these as long as I've kept it you know in an airtight container you can pull those out whenever you want stick it in a microwave safe dish like a silicone dish to pour again and just cook it at the at 30 second intervals and then you have ready-made isomalt. So if you wanna make this in bulk, I only used a pound today, but if you wanna uh, make it in bulk, you can have all kinds of tiles, stick it in an uh, airtight container and then you can just cook, you can just stick it in the microwave, pop it in there and you're ready to go and you don't have to do the whole cooking process again. So that's always a great idea to do ahead of time. Now you'll notice there's not much clarity on these. They're kind of foggy. I'll show you how to get rid of that fogginess. So we pop these right out and always make sure that you're pulling it when you pour ice malt into a silicone uh, mold or whatever, that that silicone mold 
is made to withstand high heat. Otherwise, you're gonna ruin your mold and your ice malt if it isn't built to withstand high heat. So only pour into silicone molds that are made for high heat. And so I'm just gonna pop these ones out. These are my tiles. See, they're ready to, you know, uh, be used and pop in the microwave at any time. So I'm just gonna set those aside and I can just reuse that at a different time. Now I'm gonna get out my kitchen torch and um, I've got it on a, like a medium setting of a, the torch and I'm just going to lightly touch the sides with the bubbles and I'll kind of lightly graze each area because we want to get out those, those little bubbles but if you spend too much time in one area it'll start to melt and you're gonna lose that that form and the whole reason you put it into a mold so you just want to touch it lightly you want to get out some of those bubbles and um, you don't want to sacrifice your whole shape for clarity so you want to hit it and sometimes maybe go away hit a different one and then come back and hit that one just a little bit more just don't over melt them now i just love working with ice malt because there are just so many things you can do with sugar with pulling into different shapes and blowing and it is a lot of fun and you, it's kind of addictive the more you get into it but be super super cautious with it too because it is super hot when i am actually touching it in its hot form i make sure that i use a pair of cotton gloves under my latex gloves and uh that way i am not um scalding my hands but even so even with the, those gloves you got to be super super careful but it is a lot of fun and addicting once you you get into the the sugar world because there's so much you can do with this so many uh, different show pieces and stuff that you could do with this cake toppers cake accents um i i just absolutely loved getting into it and and some of the casting i would say is the easiest so if you just want to pour and cast to begin with that's that's a great way to start i think when i started i got like straight into pulling a rose and i wanted to pull a rose right away and that it was difficult but you can do it yeah i have a tutorial on that so look that one up that's a lot of fun too but um my first blown figure was uh blown sugar swan and yeah that totally had me addicted as like this is something i can do so i like to share my experiences with you and uh everything i have learned from uh pulling blowing and casting ice malt and even my regular sugar recipe where I can do all, all of this from regular sugar. Regular sugar is cheaper, yes, but it is also more yellow looking when you're done and it doesn't reheat the way ice malt does. When you cook regular sugar, you need to use it right away and the reheating process kind of makes sugar crystallize. So it's cheaper and you can try it initially with casting and stuff, that sugar recipe is on my channel. But if you want to do the reheating and the crystal clear, I would use ice malt. Now, ice malt is a sugar substitute made from beet sugar, so it is uh, good for diabetics even. So it's a great substance to work with, and thank you for watching my channel.